Welcome everyone to Real Estate on the Up, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes of the real estate world in Orlando. I'm your host, Kyle Madoran, and on this show, we're all about pulling back the curtain with the unfiltered truth about real estate. We're not just here to sell houses. We're here to provide concierge style service because everyone loves being treated like a VIP. This podcast is your go-to resource for transparency, integrity, and the knowledge you need to make smarter real estate decisions. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a first-time home buyer, we've got you covered. So buckle up and get ready to move up in the world of real estate. It's time for Real Estate on the Up. I'm joined today by Kathan Patel, a realtor at Century 21 here in Orlando. I have been looking forward to this chat because his story is incredibly inspiring. Caton started at Domino's Pizza as a pizza maker in high school and with hard work and perseverance, worked his way up to being a franchisee, then an assistant manager, a trainer of other managers, and finally winning a regional manager of the year award and runner up national manager of the year award. Pretty incredible. So as an entrepreneur at heart, he's opened his own businesses and finally launched his real estate career in 2019. Century 21 has honored him with multiple Emerald, Ruby, and Pinnacle Producer Awards, and now we are lucky enough to have him with us today. So without further ado, here he is. Welcome to the show, Keaton Patel. Thank you. You are most welcome. Thank you for joining us. I am super excited to have you on because I think that this is a story that so many people can relate to, the idea of working hard, building yourself up, achieving your goals, and now being in real estate, which is something that so many people are are trying to do. So tell us a little bit about your story. I always looked at there's nothing you cannot achieve. Everything is achievable. It's uh, the mindset you have to have. You have to work hard, put in the time, and just go for it. A lot of entrepreneurs out there that start with nothing and make it big. And that's at any level. I look at it as... When I was in Domino's, when I ran convenience store, liquor store, gas station, whatever I've done, it's just a matter of putting your time in, effort. And the biggest thing, again, is also customer service. That's a big thing you have to have is customer service. If you're looking for that money when you're selling property, doing anything, and it's, if it's always all about money, two things are going to happen. You're going to hate it in the long term. Yeah, you might make money, but you're not going to uh, keep happy customers. And the other thing, I don't know how people sleep without <laughs> having the thought of helping customers out. You're absolutely right. Th- this is a people business. It is all about customer service. And I think that the most successful agents and the ones that will continue to be successful in the changing market are the ones that put their customers first, just like you do. I saw a quote And I thought this was great. You'd said, selling or buying doesn't have to be painful. Let me help you make it fun and joyful. And I thought that was awesome because that's something that, you know, too often you transactions get uh, bogged down with challenges and they're, you know, there's, uh, they're difficult. There's a lot of bits and pieces, a lot of moving parts. So tell me a little bit about how you prioritize making home buying or selling easy and enjoyable for your clients. First thing I try to learn my clients, see what their needs are, where they want to be. And again, every purchase on a home, I think of it as a business. How is it going to help them in the future also? Not just, okay, here's a home, because that's no average, and I'm one of them, that moves every five years. So I think I've moved 17, 18 times the last time I checked since I've been in the United States since 1982. So that's a lot of moving. And people have to understand that you want to move in, but think of it as a business, not just as a my home and my forever home. Only one person I know that's been in their home since 1960s, and that's my <laughs> uncle up in California. <laughs> right. He still has it there, but... Majority of everybody eventually moves for some reason. I mean, downsize, maybe upsize, job, maybe you want to be out in the rural area, maybe need to be in the city. So think of it that way. And I also guide them throughout the whole process. It's not just looking at the house. I look at details of the house, 
see what's going on, everything else, do my research on the pricing and make sure that it's better for the client. I have told clients where sometimes as much as they love it, I'm like, I don't think this is the home for you. That's my opinion. But I do tell them, it's like, hey, it's up to you. I'm here to help, but this is my opinion. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. You're a consultant. It's your job to help guide them to make a great decision. And I don't think there's anything wrong with giving your honest opinion instead of them having to walk into a situation where they might not be happy with in the future. And you can see that because you have the experience, you're a professional, but they may not realize it. And you're trying to help guide them in the right direction. I think that's great. Yeah, now, that's, uh, I mean, I think every agent should have that mindset is like, put the customer first. I mean, yes. if it takes 10 houses to see 100 houses, takes a year, whatever. Yeah. But it's their livelihood, it's their money. That's a lot of money they're going to invest in a house and they should be able to get into something that they're comfortable in. Absolutely. For yeah. most people, it's the biggest investment they make, right? It's, it's important. Yeah. So as a person who, just going back to this positivity, this, or it doesn't have to be painful, it can be joyful. What are some ways you infuse joy and positivity into interactions with your customers? And showing the properties and not only show them what's available, we could show them what can be done in a house. So it can be a house that just might need a wall taken off, put a wall in, kind of show them the vision, show them what's out there, possibilities. Also, it's not like whenever you have mortgage things, don't worry about it. We have people that, you know, I work with for more title and all that, they'll take care of majority of it. So when I'm working with clients, I tell them it's not as difficult. We just have to work with the right people and get that thing done. So I'm always working with people that want to help people. So I try to keep my circle small when I'm working with my lenders, my title company, and others. Just so I know, because if I have a client calling up a lender, I want that lender to answer that client's call at 8 o'clock at night. Right. Or be ready to get me a, a pre-approval. Because sometimes you love a house, you need that pre-approval on a weekend, I'd like to have that. So that way we could get that client into that house. I've written contracts as late as 11 o'clock at night with the client, trying to get that in first thing in the morning, making sure that we have our offer in. Right. Not it's not a nine to five job. Time. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not a nine to five job. And I, I'm not telling anybody to call me at 10 o'clock or anything <laughs> to do it. I've written a contract while I was in Arizona for a wedding. Between events, I had to end up writing up a contract for a client and I have no problem. It doesn't take that much. And to me, it's not work when I'm doing that. It's more of an assignment. I'm like, all right, we got this house. We're getting this client a house. And that to me is more getting that job done, it, getting yep. them in a house. Yeah, and you're there. Absolutely. You're there when you when they need you, no matter when it is. I think that's so important for agents to know and for the public to know. Really good agents, real estate is not nine to five. So if things have to happen after hours, you're there taking care of your customer when need be. And just like you mentioned, it's very important to have partners, whether it be mortgage partners, other real estate professionals here, you can count on in your circle, you know, that you trust and that will provide that kind of service as well. That's great. There is obviously a lot that agents can do to help buyers in the local area to find the perfect home, achieve a successful sale. And having local knowledge is, is important with that. How do you leverage your knowledge of the local area to assist your customers? First of all, I always ask my clients, do they need, where do they work? Do they need to be near their work? Are they working online? What is their preference? Do they need to be near certain areas, shopping, or do they want to be in a quiet, peaceful, away from the city area? And once I get that, then we figure out, let's get the uh, pre-approval done so we know what price range we're working at. Because sometimes what happens is we're looking at $800,000 home and they might not pre uh, qualify for that range. And sometimes it's not how much money you're making. It's just there's so many interactive things that are going on with their financing. Sometimes you could have a great job, but you just have other mortgages, other businesses that makes you not qualify. 
Oh yeah, it can be and very complicated happens. depending on their situation. Yeah. That's complicated. So I always ask my clients, I mean, I'll show them home without getting pre-approval, but I ask them to get pre-approval so we know where we're standing. Right. So you're not looking at this house at this level, but you only qualify here. And then your mind is already set on this house and you're like feeling depressed. I'm like, no, yep. we need to be in the right range. Let's find the right range. And then when we're putting an offer, we want that paper so we could get that done right away. Yeah, yeah. getting pre-approved at the start is so important. Yeah, you're right. Yep. So that kind of helps. And it, overall, every client is different. I mean, we I work with investors, people looking for homes, people looking for townhouses for their kids while they're going in college. So there's a different kind of buyers. So you just have to see where it is. And then you work along with those eyes. Right. And as you're kind of alluding to, there's often challenges, you know, things that come up during a transaction because there are so many steps. There's so many little intricate details involved. So what steps do you take to alleviate any potential pain points or challenges that customers can encounter during the buying or selling process? I make sure that we're the time periods that we have, the inspection period, you don't want to be beyond the inspection period and then come up and say, hey, I need to cancel my contract because so-and-so thing is wrong. I got timelines are stuff that we want to make sure we have. And I do have a uh, transaction coordinator that I get just because of the clientele I have, so many of them. I want to make sure everybody's time is you know, looked at so we don't miss any inspections, appraisals, loan commitment or any of those things and be close on time without any problems. And then of course, anytime, if there is something, I do work very close with other agents. I try to always call them, make sure we're on the same page at throughout the transaction. My thing isn't, all right, we're under contract. I'll see you at the closing table. Right. That, and I've seen that happen and I'm like, oh, yeah. oh, no, you can't do that. That you have to be part of the process. You've got to help these people throughout. I mean, some can't be an absentee it. agent. Yeah. You can't just disappear. Yeah. Yep. I always tell everybody I'm not a discount uh, agent. I'm through it throughout full services. Hands my on. Role. Yep. We get a lot of questions, you know, obviously the market's changed a bit and it's continuing to evolve. What advice would you offer to first time home buyers or sellers who may be apprehensive about entering the market today? Here's the biggest thing, and I hear this a lot from my broker, and he says, two things you got to keep. Marry the house, take the rate. Basically meaning you could always refinance whenever the right rate comes along. So look into, if you need to get into a house, you could get into a house. Because when you're renting, you're paying 100% interest on that house. Keep that in mind. Every penny you're putting in for that rental on the uh, apartment you're not getting anything. That's right. 100% so interest. Yeah. 8% interest rate is better than paying 100% when you're renting. And right now with the interest rate being a little bit high, there are going to be more negotiation room when you're purchasing a home. Right. You could get that done. And whenever interest rate goes down 6%, 5%, refinance it. And if interest rate never goes down, guess what? You could look back and say, I got it at a great interest rate. I'm not paying at a higher rate. Right. So it's all about mindset, how you want to put it up on that rate. I definitely would say if you need to move, I mean, if it's not necessary and you're still looking for the right places, I understand. Take your time. But if you need to move and you're a first time buyer, move forward with it. And as far as real estate goes, 1980s, it was in the two digit home, you know, <laughs> price range. Yeah. 80,000, 90,000, all that. I also look at like when I say business, if you're in 30s, buy a house, by the time you're ready to retire, that's going to be that money from your house that you could use to have your nice retirement. You got it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a forced savings account. And also, obviously, yep. over time, real estate has always appreciated historically. You give enough time, it's yep. always going to go up in value. Even though there's blips, there's you know there have been several times where the markets had challenges, but over time, it's a great long-term investment, and that, that's important for people to know for sure. 
I, I explain that to my clients. I'm like, here's what it is. This is what it, it takes time. And I've had clients I've worked for a year before they're comfortable in a house. So mm-hmm. I don't ever push my client saying, you need to buy now. I can't be driving around every day, showing you homes. I mean, I work within reasons and trying to get them into a night. Yeah. The time has to be right for them. They have to be not only financially get, getting their pre-approval and everything in order that way, but they have to mentally be in the right place. You know, they have to be ready to pull the trigger and make that move. And, and you're right. Sometimes that takes a bit of time. Yep. <laughs> it definitely does. And sometimes it just takes the encouragement. It's letting right. them know, hey, this is what it is. You have to open it up like a business and show what the benefits are what you're looking into and everything else. That's great that you can uh, illustrate those advantages to them as well. Now you've been through a lot in the business world, a lot of different roles. You've had a tremendous journey. So what inspired you personally to pursue a career in real estate? And how has your approach now evolved over being in real estate for now five years? So being in so many businesses, always being in management, running working that nine to five, always having to be at the shop, liquor store, Domino's, everything else. And when I sold my Domino's, I had, I mean, my liquor store six years ago, I had no idea what I was going to do. So I had a friend of mine, very close friend. And he's like, you know what, KP, why don't you get into 7-Eleven? You're great at franchise, everything you could. And I'm like, you know what? I'm done with the employees. I don't want to deal with employees no more. And I was just thinking, and my wife's looking at me and my daughter, they're like, why don't you go into sales? You are a great salesperson. You care about people and you've helped a lot of people, you know, get into business and everything else. So why don't you do something you did for free for a living? So back in early 2000s, And on, I've always helped people when they were looking for gas station, convenience store, I'd go with them. I'd explain, okay, here's what's going on. I've helped people get into businesses, help people with houses, you know, even back then. I've always been in real estate mind. I could say I've been in real estate all my life because it's always been something I've been passionate about. I've always looked at LoopNet and all that, even when... I wasn't buying anything, just keeping an eye on stuff, seeing what's going on, where is things going on. And I kind of have look at areas where it's not developed and it's up and coming. So I tell a lot of clients, it's like, this is where you want to be, you know, four or five years and everything. And it's just a trend. You could see it. If you're ever since I've been in uh, Florida since 2001, I've seen changes in cities. Even my first house when I bought in Paris, it was out in the boonies. And right now, if you go to that same house, it's surrounded by neighborhoods. It's like it's middle of everything. Same thing Winter Garden when I bought my other house. Before everybody started you know, building as much in Winter Garden, my wife's like, why are you bringing me in this area where there's nothing? There's no stores or anything nearby. And I'm like, I think everything's going to come. We just need to move there before everything comes. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I, I don't know if it's just luck or whatever, but I've always looked into what's out there, what's going to help to bring that business. I mean, more housing or businesses in their neighborhood. I think it's more than luck. It's your experience. You have an eye for that and you have a sense of it. Like you say, you've had this passion for real estate for decades and I think even if it wasn't something you were consciously thinking of, you had that idea of, of the opportunity that existed in these places. And that's great. And that's why someone hires a knowledgeable professional because they they have that instinct. I think that's really important. So before we we wrap up, I'd love for you to tell us stories, story or stories of success, memorable experiences from your career, just maybe something that highlights your commitment to making transactions enjoyable or something that you're really proud of. So my biggest achievement was a house. I helped a client of mine that was evicted from an apartment. She had a little child and a dog. 
And the reason she was evicted was the landlord was foreclosed on. Oh. And she was just paying that person for about six months without knowing he didn't own the property. So when she was kicked out, she had a big dog and she's like, I can't get a rental. I can't do nothing. She was living at campsites and oh, they wow. only allow you to stay so long. So she'd be at campsites and a couple of days at a hotel, get back to the campsite and everything. She approached me, credit issues and other stuff. So I'm like, okay, let's take a look, see what we can do. Let's figure it out. I called up my lender, Mihir Patel, great lender. I've and one guy I could call at midnight and he'll give me an answer. So I talked to him, we made a plan and this was up in the housing. We're trying to figure out where we could find her house and ended up looking at all over and found something in Spring Hill. So now this is me driving to Spring Hill from Orlando to that's a drive. homes yeah, that's that a are drive. 140, 150. Ended up, we found this one great property, a small, over half an acre, close to an acre lot. I think it was about an acre lot. We worked it out. We had to do some looking into, figuring it out. And she even said it. I mean, she wrote me a testimonial that's like long. It was like almost a chapter about the whole process. But getting back to it, we had gone up, looked at it. We had to get her mother involved in it to get a cosign and everything else. But eventually we ended up getting her a house. And right now I think it's worth 300, three times the amount she wow. paid. That's fantastic. And it, it, that was my biggest thing. She had was told by other agents, oh, you can, with that credit rate, you can't do it with lenders that said, oh no, there's no way you're getting this done or anything. So it takes you have to look outside the box, figure out what can make it happen to you. We can do to get that loan done. And right. it was just, wasn't the biggest paycheck starting off. And this was right when I started in real estate. So it was like in that 2019, 2020 year time. But I think that overall has my biggest rewarding sell that I've ever had. That's fantastic. I love that. I love it because it meant something to you on a deeper level than just the closing and commission. That's fantastic. Before we wrap up, if people would like to get in touch with you, they have questions, they'd like your help in real estate. What's the best way for them to reach you? Best way you could reach me is you could call me 352-446-7821 or you could go to kphomes.com. That's another site. You could get a hold of me. You could text me. You could call Century 21 Professional Group here in Okoye, and they'll get you in touch with me. But so there are a lot of ways. Okay, great. Always accessible, just not at 10 o'clock at night, if we can avoid it. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah. I kind of no, I'm just kidding. Now no, that that's great. Get calls at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And I'm like, I think I could wait till morning to call them back. Right. If it's not an emergency, you'll be there though. You'll be there. Well, Peyton, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and you joining us today. KP, Caden Patel, everybody. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed being with us as well. I loved it. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to everybody. Our pleasure. All right. Look forward to talking to you again. Hopefully we could get together for a coffee since you're here in Orlando. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Take care, everybody. Take care. As we conclude another eye-opening episode of Real Estate on the Up, I want to express my appreciation for joining us. Thank you for being a valuable part of the Real Estate on the Up community. Your time and engagement mean the world, so make sure you subscribe and leave a review. Your real estate goals are my priority, and my team and I are here to provide the personalized attention and service that have earned us high recognition. If you have questions, need guidance, or are ready to make a move, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm just a message away. I'm Kyle Madoran, one of Rate My Agents Top 100 in the United States, signing off. Until next time, take care and make those real estate dreams a reality. <laughs>